Now, okay, you guys are used to the unit circle. And on the unit circle, we use y and x the way you were, uh, you're used to. And then we also talk about theta. One way to look at theta is as if it were a bicycle spoke, as if this radius were spinning around over and over and over again. Okay? We're going to look at this totally differently now. And some of you may have seen this before. Some of you may have seen this before and not known what it was you were looking at. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw a new axis. And this is still going to be y, but the x-axis now, I'm going to make theta. Make the x-axis into theta. What we're going to be talking about is how this radius spins around the axis here, but when I transfer that over to here, we get something a little bit differently, a little bit different. So I'm going to graph y equals sine theta. First, I'm going to make a quick table for my graph, and this table is going to apply to both of these. If theta is 0 degrees, what's y? What's the sign of 0? You can speak. <laughs> oh. uh, the sign of 0 is 0. What's the sign of pi over 2? 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. We waited for Alba to speak before it was correct, apparently. Um, what's the sign of pi? 180. Do you have a second one? Zero. No. Does anyone have a calculator I can borrow? Hun, come on, get out of here. I <laughs> am. All right. Um, what is 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. Negative 1. Very good, because it's the... Uh, y value we're talking about, and what's 2 pi? Zero. Zero. Okay, so what's going to happen here as theta now, instead of representing going around in a circle, theta now represents going down the x-axis, and we'll start calling it the x-axis again soon. So these are now basically x, y points. We start at zero, zero. We go to Pi over 2, 1. This will be 1, this will be negative 1. We go to pi, 0, hits the x-axis again, which is now the theta axis. We go to 3 pi over 2, and we're at negative 1. And when we get to 2 pi, we're back at 0. So now, every 90 degrees becomes a tick mark on an x-axis. And there will be a very particular shape to this. I'm not going to go through and fill in the. Um, I'm not going to go through and fill in all, any additional points. But you can't just connect these with straight lines. I'll go ahead and tell you that the curve to this, the slope starts shallow, gets steep, it rounds up here. You, Mr. Singer did get to some of this with you. Yeah. yeah. It was all the y-x axis. But yes. It was just up and down. Okay. No, 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 but then, he, oh, but then I asked a question. He told us had no uh -huh. range. Of, I don't remember any of it, but I've seen it. Okay, good. I'm glad you've seen it, because that'll speed things up a little bit. So we're going to stop calling this theta and start calling it x soon. And so we'll just talk about the graph of y equals sine x. Yes? Um, I was so busy like trying to keep up with you. You were like going really fast, that I have no idea why there's like, a squiggly line on the board now. Okay. Um, I was trying to write everything down. And all right. Well, if necessary, don't try to write it down now. Just pay attention and catch up later with this. Okay. Here's the usual unit circle we're used to, right? We've got y's, we've got x's, and we've got a theta spinning around. Yeah. All right. Instead of looking at the graph this way, now we're going to have a y-axis and a theta axis. Okay. And we're going to take the points from the unit circle that we know. We know when the angle is zero degrees, y is zero degrees. Okay, because the y coordinate here, y is always the sine on the unit circle. Okay? So we've got these points, bless you, that are theta y points here. When the angle is pi over two, the sine is one. When the angle is pi, the sine is zero. Okay? Oh, I don't watch. Hang on one sec. So we put the we graph these as x, y points on this graph. 
and then they're connected in this pattern. So how do you know where to put the different pi things in the theta axis? Straight from here. So like you can pick other ones, but it's really hard to know. I could pick pi over 4, but then I'd have to graph root 2 over 2, which is about 0.7. These are the easiest to graph. I could graph pi over, th over 6, 30 degrees, and that would be... That point is on here, too. That's a great question, actually. These points are all on this graph. Okay, but I just picked the four easy, the five easiest ones to graph. Megan. Um, why didn't you, why didn't you those squiggly line go through pi over two? Why didn't it go through pi over two? Um, go, go through it. Like it went through pi and it went up to two pi, but you skipped pi over two and three pi over two. I didn't skip them. Well, you didn't go through them. When the angle is pi over 2, what is the actual value of the sign? 90. 90. That's, okay. Well, no, well, that's the value of the angle. What's the sign of pi over 2? Pi over 2, 1. 1. So this is the actual point, pi over 2, comma 1, up here. This graph represents the relationship between the values of the angles and their signs. So you should never... So, uh -oh. so it shouldn't cross pi over 2. Because when the angle is pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Uh -huh. So what we're doing is we're graphing angles and their sine values. Uh -huh. And we're using the theta as if it were the x variable. So pi, the sine of pi is, is zero. 0. So that's why it passes through the point. The sine of 3 pi over 2 oh, is negative 1. Oh, so these are our coordinate points. Okay. I get it now. Yes. So can you do this with... Not just sine of theta, but... Cosine, cosine tangent, theta. secant, cosecant, like cotangent. Not, we'll get to all six. But not oh, all really? on the yeah. same yeah. graph. Uh, we can put them all on the same graph, but that would be messy. <laughs> so yeah. we're not going to. Okay. Yeah. Um, but what? What? theta is theta. Um, is you should never get higher than one and lower than negative one. Oh, Perker, brilliant segue. Excellent. Um, <laughs> if all we're doing is transferring the unit circle to a graph, we are done. And this would be a very short lesson, and this would also be of limited use in physics and engineering. And physics. Well, here's what we're going to do, and this is a slight, this is the only place where I see a disadvantage to move to, move to the trig to the beginning of the year. Um, we haven't reviewed basic function behavior, because that would help right now. On the other hand, when we get to basic function behavior, what I'm about to show you will help. So come on over here, and Janan, you might have to bounce back and forth, because I might have to refer back to that one. You got but, it. Um, you said her name. First name's okay. Are you gonna put it on like the credits? No. <laughs> Modifying the sine function. And that's what this is now. This is an actual function. So it obeys all the rules of functions, and I hope you remember somewhat from last year. Isn't Vertical line function? rule. Pardon? Isn't every graph a graph a function? No, because if it fails the vertical line test, oh, it's a right. graph but not a function. Yeah. Like the conics you did last year? Yeah. Those weren't functions, except the parabola. Um, modifying the sine function. Okay, here are the modifications. And these modifications actually work for other types of functions. Um, Becca, you might have a little advantage here because you're used to the way I explained, like, counterintuitive up and down and left and right, and intuitive, intuitive up and down, counterintuitive left and right. So to me, the same sort of thing. There's four things, and the homework tonight's going to give you, the homework for the next few nights will only ask you to deal with one or two of them at a time, but eventually you have to deal with all four. I'm going to write this as y equals a times sine of b x minus c, all in parentheses, plus d. And I'm going to define these four different quantities. a, b, c, and d are going to be constants. They're going to be coefficients. We're just numbers sitting on the end by themselves. They're not going to be variables. The only variables here are x and y. So within one graph, these won't change. What we're looking at over here, what we just looked at, this first sine graph, is just y equals 1 sine of 1x minus 0 plus 0. On a regular sine graph, a is 1, b is 1, c is 0, d is 0. Here's what each of these things do. a is amplitude. Amplitude is distance from 
center axis. Amplitude is distance from your center axis. What's your center axis on this basic sine wave I did over here? Zero, zero. The zero, zero is the origin. Center axis is a line. The theta axis? The theta axis. You said it correctly. I was actually waiting for the x-axis, but I did label it the theta axis here, so that's correct. Yeah, and it's also the line y equals zero is another way to describe that. That axis is the middle. This regular sine wave, as Parker pointed out, if all you're dealing with is the, the stuff from the unit circle, it'll only go up to one and down to negative one. But if I put a coefficient here, that'll change how much up and down it goes. That will stretch the sine wave, okay? B is probably the most confusing one. What I'm about to give you is essentially a built-in conversion from radians to other numbers, okay? And that lets you work with these. You'll see how these are manipulated more uh, later this week, but this coefficient b 